stage who knows everything about uh, picking the low hanging fruit. Mm. Most of you got to know him still that he is the guy with the vision, right? He kind of, he was the chief visionary officer. I love this position. <laughs> visionary yeah. officer, yeah, yeah. visionary yeah. officer. Great, right, cool. yeah. And I've heard it again. Cool. Yeah. It's just his thing. He earned it because he's the guy who made a network data center profitable within six months, which is quick. Yeah. I suppose, which is really quick. And uh, well, we're look, having a look into the future again. We're looking into this year and the upcoming years. And uh, the growth possibilities of this landscape of your industry. Welcome, Carlos Rego. Thank you. So, uh, the guy that they were talking so nicely about couldn't come, so I'm here instead. Thank you so much for uh, joining me today. I want to tell you a little bit about uh, us, but also talk a little bit about the landscape of the service provider in 2022. And where do we see the potential for growth? And also, where do you stand if you're a service provider still doing traditional monolithic hosting? Where do you stand today? So myself, I'm the head of strategic development at Virtuoso been in this industry for over 20 years, uh, was one of the co-founders of ONAP, I was its chief visionary officer, and of course, ONAP and Jelastic are now part of Virtuoso. And why did we do this? So Virtuoso took a look into the uh, market, and we understood the following, and this is not going to be a surprise for anybody here today, that there's tremendous amount of scale being put on the HSPs, CSPs, and MSPs by the hyperscalers. There's a lot of consolidation going on, a lot of some of them going to MAs, but there's this tremendous need to optimize their offerings and also optimize cost, density, and additional services in order to be able to compete with the hyperscalers. Because if you go tip to toe with the same exact product, uh, there's little benefit that you can add to it. Now, there's also market pressures. So we saw a lot of consolidation in the hosting space, and that drove to, um, to a lot of our clients to come to us and say, look, I now have more sites to manage. I have more technologies to manage. How can I do all of this with one product? Uh, shared hosting, no surprise to, every, to anyone here. There's a big shift towards application-based services. There's an application modernization, a real need for pass. So what did that mean to us? What did we do? We did exactly, as I said, this was Virtuoso in the beginning. This is what we call Virtuoso V1. And we focused and did very well in the infrastructure layer. We have our own Linux distribution. We have our own container technology. We manage KVM. We manage, and we make OpenStack actually usable, if you believe it. And of course, we have our own storage technology. But that wasn't enough. And some of the challenges that our customers were facing when needing to go up the stack, we needed more. And we did that by bringing in ONAP, and that gave us the additional orchestration layer that our clients required. They have more services to manage. They needed better orchestration, but also gave us the ability to manage additional hypervisors, such as, such as VMware, for a true hybrid setup. And of course, we then brought in Jelastic. And that gave us the platform. As I said before, there's a move towards application modernization, a move towards pass. We needed to do something about it. Our clients were requiring it. So this is what we now call the new virtuals of V2. And the idea really is to go full circle and really be able to, you know, to tackle all these issues that our clients were telling us, look, what do we do about this? Now, how does this help you? At value, what does that mean to me, Carlos? Okay, that's great, that's virtuals, but what does it mean to me? Well, simple. This is, of course, the cloud continuum, what we call it, and you're either doing shared hosting, or you're doing DPS hosting, or you're doing cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud. But the value really is of the stack. So if you're doing 
just traditional file, you're missing out because X is a service, App is a service, Kubernetes is a service. We all, again, I'm not saying anything wrong breaking here. This is the issue that all of you know. That's where the value is. And you really need to go up the stack. And what do I mean by that? I mean that the infrastructure as a service is simply not enough. And as if you saw from my slides, that was our focus. We did amazing infrastructure as a service. We needed to go up the stack. So if you only do this, what does that mean to you? Well, if you're still only share, selling shared hosting, well, you are what we call in the industry a company in walking that mode. This is not a term that I made up. This is a well-known term. And it is a company that refuses to change. And the, the main reason why I see a lot of people that come to me and say, well, Carlos, but I don't want to disrupt my current business. I'm afraid to change. What, what's going to happen to all my shared hosting accounts? Well, here's the thing. You are, either you like it or not, in a slow decline. You are fighting churn. So unless you move and unless you do something and change towards new technologies, you are going to disrupt your, your current clients because they're going to leave. And another thing that a lot of our clients tell us, I mean, I've been in this industry for many years, I know many of you here, is, well, you know, I built this company for one day to have an exit. Well, we all know how the exits nowadays are going for hosting companies, especially those focusing on shared hosting. It's a bottom market. So you need to modernize and you need to move beyond shared hosting. So going really up the stack. Okay, so where is the growth? Well, this slide should come as no surprise to most of you as well. I am, again, stating the obvious. But for those of you who don't look into this data, the real growth happens especially on the SaaS side with cloud application services. You, can, you guys can see here from 2020 to 2022, uh, growth from 102 to 145 billion. But it is SaaS that is driving the demand for infrastructure and platform. So even if you're not or cannot be a SaaS provider, you definitely need to be at least an infrastructure provider. But above all, you need to be a platform provider because those are the things that are driving the layer above. So at bare minimum, and of course, I'm telling you this today, but actually I, I remember doing a keynote in this stage maybe 10 years ago where I was saying the same message. You really need to move to infrastructure. So 10 years later, if I'm still saying this, you're really late. You should have done that 10 years ago. So yes, you should at least move to infrastructure, but you know what? Really, this is where you, you need to go. This is where the new value is. You need to go into applications, Kubernetes, plat platform as a service. That's where the real value of the stack is. Now, can I prove it? Yes, I can prove it with data. So let's look, for instance, at applications. So one of the things that uh, is quite surprising because this actually started to accelerate with the pandemic was the, the usage of application containers. It really actually has ramped up. We're projecting, not we, the, uh, the, the people much smarter than me, uh, analysts are projecting a 24.8% compound annual growth rate between uh, 2020 and 2025. And uh, it's growing from about just under 3 billion in 2020 to over 8 billion in 2025. Now, what this is very interesting is two ways. One is first, data shows that this is massively driven by accelerated IT initiatives or new IT initiatives. But the one thing that I loved this when I looked into this, this, uh, this data that it really hit home was the um, where are these applications being deployed? And roughly 90% of the deployments are being deployed on sub-25 million a year vendors. So that's, that's the majority of the people in this, in this room. So 
it's the uh, it's the hosting providers, the service providers that are deploying these uh, these workloads. It's the now you can look at the numbers and go like, oh, hang on, that's about a billion out of four. Yes, it is. So what that says is that the other ten percent are big, massive sales tickets and are going to a different type of provider that can share that, that, that can service that kind of scale. But the vast majority of numbers and a massive amount of revenue is going exactly to guys such as yourself. For those of you who don't know what Cogner means, it's compound annual growth rate, and that's how you calculate it. The, uh, the second one, well, that comes as no surprise, of course, is WordPress. Uh, if anybody here is not aware of this, WordPress rules, and if it's on web, it's on WordPress. And, but why do I have this slide here? Because again, misconception. A lot of people come to us and say, well, you know, people really are going to Wix. Really are going to, people are really going to Squarespace. Why, why should I offer WordPress? Actually, they're not. Every day, over 500 new sites are built on WordPress. Only about 60 to 80 are built on the other platforms combined. The top, WordPress, the top sites every day, the top 10 million sites every day, another 1,000 WordPress sites join. And of course, we're, we all know the statistics. 43% of all websites on WordPress, you really should be there. Now, what are the two use cases then? It's the one that I said, container-based platform as a service. Application modernization, you need to move from traditional shared hosting to platform. That's, That's where your clients are going. You need to modernize it with PaaS. Second one is WordPress as a service. Again, a big topic on this, um, on this Cloud Fest this year. Everybody's talking about it. We're talking about it as well. And we are telling this to all of our clients. You really need to modernize. You need to offer WordPress as a service offering. Because, I mean, WordPress, the whole WordPress ecosystem <laughs> the numbers are staggering. It is slowly walk well, not slowly, very fastly walking towards a trillion market with 635 billion by the end of 2021. It's growing 5% year on year, but actually the, the amount generated by those websites is growing more than the number of websites. So in a few years, we will see a one trillion WordPress economy. So you're either in, or you're out. Of course, because I need to sell my bread, <laughs> I'm here to tell you that you can do all of this with your existing infrastructure on Virtuoso. We have the tools, we have, as with the acquisitions that I mentioned, we have all the things required for you to be able to do it. And we have a great promotion to get you started. So come visit us on our booth. We're going to give you six months for free. Come visit me on the booth and tell me why you think I'm wrong. I always love a good debate. And uh, thank you, gentlemen. I'm done on the notes. Thank you so much, Carlos. Having you back on stage here at CloudFest. We were just chatting, right? Backstage, like, wow. It is kind of weird to be in front of so many people again and with all things happening yes. all over the world. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's great to see everybody. I mean, uh, we went through the pandemic. Uh, it was sad not to be able to come here and visit a lot of friends. But we're back, and it's like, you know, no time has gone. We're back, and you'll be we're back, back next year as well. Thank you so much, Carlos. Rigo, Vice President of Strategic Development. Right.